Don't sit on the heart. Don't sit on the heart. What? Don't sit on the heart. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. This is a talk, a new crits talk between Ajay Kurian and Jamie and Giuliano Volani. Let's begin. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I think every single one of our talks has had a giant storm at the same time. So I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, this is our eighth talk, and this is with Jamie and Giuliano Villani. Um, New Crits is a global platform for art mentorship. Uh, we do in-person talks, and then we also have 16 artists on our platform where you can book with them. And basically, I, all we're trying to do is democratize arts education for people so that they don't have to spend $100,000 to get an MFA. Um, with that, you can find us on Substack, on Instagram, on YouTube. This talk is going to be recorded. So if you miss anything or if you don't have the best view, you can watch on YouTube. Um, I'm going to. Well, first of all, a round of applause for Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's got a big show up right now at Gagosian. If you haven't seen it already, um, go Check see it. Check it out. Yeah. Can it's... you hear us too? Can you guys hear us? Can you yes. hear Jamie? Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm In the back? back? In the back, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, work. All right. All right, I'm going to do like a quick intro and then we're just going to get into it. Um, if at any point, like, I, I'm not trying to say that shout out anything that you want, but if there is something that feels relevant, raise your hand in the middle of the talk, and like, we'll, we can keep it moving, and we can have a conversation with one another, because I know probably a lot of you have questions that you want to ask her, and I'm not going to ask all of them. So. And we may have to pass out the bucket for five bucks for the wine, because no one's going to move, so I'm just letting you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jamie was born in 1987 in Newark, New Jersey, and lives and works in New York. As the daughter of commercial silkscreen printers, she spent time as a child working in her parents' factory, folding more than 4,000 Pope John Paul II t-shirts in 97-degree heat while absorbing the influence of 1990s and 2000s mass market print design. She attended the Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University, New Jersey, graduating with a BFA. She doesn't have a master's. While there... She was influenced by the institution's historic ties to Fluxus, her studies with John Yao and Rafael Ortiz, and the Zimmerly Art Museum's collection of 1970s Soviet conceptual painting. Uh, she's shown fucking everywhere. And uh, she's in the collection, uh, she's in the Guggenheim's collection, the Whitney Museum's collection, the High Museum of Art in Atlanta, uh, and the Louis Vuitton Foundation's collection as well. Uh, again, give it up for Jamie. How you doing? I'm good. So, what is it like having a show at Kogosian right now? Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like I honestly, uh, you know, I've, you know, a lot of people here are artists and whatnot, but like painting and making work for so long, and then you have like a space that elevates it in a way that you're, you know, you could actually see what the fuck you're doing. It was really awesome. This is yeah. like kind this of one. early, early shows, I want to say 2013? Yeah, so this, this show was basically uh, supposed to be, you know, I wanted the whole thing to kind of be like one giant mural. And it was a terrible show title. It was called Crypod. And uh, basically, I tried to make the gallery smaller so the paintings looked bigger, which is like a nice trick to do. So This gallery was like maybe a quarter of the space that we're in right now. So like every single wall was basically just a painting. Let me see. Here we go. I think like your working style back then, like there's a lot of shifts that we can talk about yeah. as the work continues. But like, I feel like when you were first starting, it was constantly, it was almost like, I want to say like Hans Hoffman push and pull, but mm -hmm. like, with images and like found material. So with this show, Ajay and I have been friends for a very long time, like maybe over 10 years or something like that. And I remember he came to the studio that I was in and I was working on the show 
and everything, see the, that middle painting in the back? Everything was that like fucked up bisquick color. And he came in and was like, this looks like shit. So the day before I'd like fucking change everything to blue. I wanted to kill him, but he was right. Um, yeah, you know, working on big scale was something new for me. So it was so hectic. And now I'm getting better at it, but yeah. These are all like, I feel like people are always obsessed with how you work and how images come together. Like, mm. what's the, what's a typical day? Like, what do you, I feel like the lists are important. Yeah, so like basically, okay, my work, it, you know, everyone works differently. I work differently all the time. I kind of had a system for like years, which was basically generating all these lists of ideas and then seeing what the fuck popped in my head. And then based off of that, would be like extreme editing and then kind of collaging. And then um, what I would do, you know, is kind of like all these ideas would exist on the same painting at the same time, you know? So that's why, like, you know, how they look doesn't really matter whether or not, like, that was the idea for the painting. It's just like, what the fuck happened, you know? So it's kind of like a record of time. It's not really about, like, the, the uh, painting as a painting. So that's what, um, so here's a great example. See all that white stuff on the sand? Basically, for me to get that text, I got a birthday cake and went in a cab forever and it said, happy 29th birthday, Jamian. We love you so much, love mom and dad. And we rode in the car so much till the shit got fucked up and then I put it on the, the sand. So it's like, it can be anything really, you know? And then um, that's what my teeth looked like before I had dental work, which is terrifying, but it's true. I was really trying to find, like... What my teeth looked like? Yeah, because there's old Instagram images of, like, God. when you used to have yeah, yeah, your other now. teeth. Yeah, But Still I there. couldn't find it. Yeah, thank God. Thank you for that. But what's... <laughs> what's like, when you are building a painting, yeah. like, how... So are you dealing one, with landscape? Like, so like, are you dealing with... Are you dealing with genre? Are you dealing with... Well, for this, I wanted to be kind of like um, almost like some surrealist thing, but also kind of like uh, graffiti trash at the same time, you know? So I think Sarah Nicole Pr Prickett wrote this review that like fucked me up because I couldn't tell if it was like a backhanded compliment. But she said the show looked like if someone had like, like um, someone had like a giant ass like McMansion with a big ass TV and nothing in the kitchen cabinets. And I was like, what the fuck? But it's kind of what it was, you know? <laughs> um, and, you know, all these things, like, you know, at this moment in time, a lot of these things were last minute decisions, which kind of like kept it alive for me because it felt like some marathon. So, like, this was like two days in, and then this was like obviously an intentional decision because of the timing of this. It's like, what is this, like, some Dune thing? Is this some like graffiti trash? Is this some horror movie? Um, but it was all like intensely personal and it was like based off of scale. But yeah, each painting is completely different, like, 100%. But that, so it's like, it's interesting to think about like how you can make a world that feels so, so weird and surreal, but it's always like, it is always personal in a way. It is, it always does come back to you. Well, yeah, and that's the thing too. It's like with my work, especially like I, you know, my brain kind of works in some kind of like, I don't remember anyone's name or anyone's faces, but it's kind of like some encyclopedic thing where it's whatever it is. And um, how I work is, it's all. It's always emotional. It just doesn't look it, you know. <laughs> that that sounds stupid, but you know what I mean. No, no. I mean, like, I I think it's like related to how you. It's memory is how memory works. But it almost feels like it goes through like a posterization process too. It has to, because this is the thing. Like when you're making paintings, right? Paintings, it's the easiest form of art. Yeah. They're portable. They're flat. It's like if it's a painting, it's already art. You know what I mean? Okay. So. If you're going to make something that's democratic, and my whole thing is like being democratic as possible. So like the things that I paint, I don't necessarily like. I just know it'll translate my idea. So. Um, but when you say idea, it's like really different than, for instance, like if I have an idea, it's, I think our ideas are very different. Totally. Like how, totally. What, is, what does idea mean to you? It's like, it feels very physical. It is very physical. And the thing is like putting it into words is kind of like not the point, but for me to remember something, I have to write it down myself. So that's really how it works. This was a night, oh my God, this was, like, <laughs> this was so stressful to make. I don't want to think about it. Keep going. Okay. And that's the thing, all these paintings, like, you know, when you, when you make so much work and you're working all the time, it's kind of traumatizing to look at, but it's cool, it's fine. What about this? 
So this is the body of a prepubescent girl, and um, these are stick bugs fucking on top of it. And it's supposed to be going through some like Mars landscape where um, it's almost like some rover craft. And um, yeah. I think like one of the things that I remember really clearly going to your studio a bunch is like you'd have all these ideas and you'd have all these things that you were thinking about. And yeah. like sometimes, like for instance, let's say that the the kind of car was there, but the stick bugs fucking weren't there yet. No, and then, and then you would be like, the all right, what should it be? Should it yeah. be this? Should it be that? Should it be this? And like, you'd run through and like some of them, you'd be like, no, it's to this, it's to that, well, or it's not enough. So like Billy and I, so Billy, who runs the gallery with me, and we've been kind of collaborating for 10 years. And you know, at some point we would make so many lists. We had like boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes, like hundreds and hundreds of like drunk scribbles of notes and like typed out things. We, any way to get to an idea, we would try to figure out. And at some point, we're like, you know, like random people probably have the best ideas because we would never come up with these ideas ourselves, you know? So at one point, we would like go around with our camera and go to bars and like, you know, pretend like we were working for some TV station and be like, <laughs> what are the four things that like mean power to you? Stuff like that, you know? And based off of that, it's like people collage, but their ideas. So it's kind of like, having some kind of giant rock you have to like parkour off of. Cause it's like a problem to solve and I like problem solving. So that's like a major element of the work, but also like any way possible to get to the thing, that's like what I do, you know? What got you into art? Can't, yeah. Can't do math, you know? Um, can't do math. Um, I was a big music loser, still am. And just like, you know, everyone's sitting on the floor looking in like images of the back of a CD. And somehow all those things like still accumulate over time, like you remember that thing, you know, it's almost like looking through a junk drawer at your parents' house. So all those things, they, they're always in the back of your head. And I just wanted like, you know, I'm like a huge fan. I'm like, I make, for the first, I feel like I've been made fan art for years. So I feel like I just wanted to make fan art of things that I haven't seen as a painting yet. Um, kind of with horse blinders on, not thinking about what was expected in terms of painting, but like what I wanted to see when I loved. So that's where it all kind of came from initially. But what about, like, because your family is in advertising and yeah. printing and all that. Like, yeah. why not go into advertising? And you, you want to work with your family? They're fucking nightmares. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. But you are, like, the more I've gotten to know your family, the more it's, like, it's clear all, that you are the They're Venn the most diagram. artistic ones, though. They're, they're insane. Yeah. Genius people, though. They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was a show I did at uh, JTT, because if you know me... My gasoline is like, you know, drinking and whatnot. You know, that's like my tap dancing version of myself. It's your spinach. It's my spinach, exactly. So um, anyone that knows me for years, I've been drinking the same whiskey. Now I'm like, you know, did a show at Gagosian, so I moved up to Jameson. But um, <laughs> um, the show is called Mrs. Evan Williams. Um, yeah. I just want to know, like, seeing this, what's your relationship with sculpture? Well, that's the thing. I never really... Painting, like I said, it's kind of like the easiest form of like art making and sculpture is always the best because it does the work for you in a way where it's like relationship to the body, relationship to people, you have to walk around it, it like talks for itself. You know, painting doesn't really do that, you have to talk about painting and I don't like talking about work. Um, that's kind of why the show at Gagosian is called It because it kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> but you know, this one, this one's called uh, The Origin of the World. This is one of my favorite paintings. Me of too, and it's difficult, and that's that's the perfect example of like how it doesn't matter what I actually like. It's the idea that I need to communicate, and they just end up looking like this. That's just how it is. Um, so, like the frame here is from Cracker Barrel. I started looking at some kind of like I wanted to start working like in an abstract term, like terms of painting, because like I'm, it's hard for me, or it was hard for me to paint abstractly because I didn't relate to it. You know, I related to like clickbait, like images, stickers, shit like that, you know, like posters, things that I can remember, like I can't remember an abstraction. So I started with this thing on the upper left and I just wanted to see where the fuck it went. And then it just kind of built up and, um, you know, yeah, this painting looks, it's awesome because when you see it in person, it doesn't look finished and I felt really good about that. <laughs> Do you think about, like, are you thinking about art history? Are you thinking about, like, how that kind it's of... That, you can't help it. Yeah. You know, just because it's, like, what the fuck we're looking at, and that's what the, the thing we're dealing with, you know? So whether you want to or not, 
of course you're going to be thinking about, you know, like an abstract painter is not going to not think about what like an Ellsworth Kelly mark looks like. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Do you look at, at like, is Ellsworth Kelly someone that matters to you? Well, the black and white images, yes. But I look at it from back up. Uh-huh. I don't because look at then it, it comes a I don't look at the again. mark making, I look at the image. Yeah, there is no mark. Yeah, yeah, there's no mark. That's it. It's like, it's like a Xerox. But like, when you were, like, say when you were at Rutgers, like yeah. when you were a student, I was like, like, did you, were you like, Dakuna? Like, did you have I was like Jules a. Jules Zalitsky and um, Eric Bolotov, and probably mispronouncing his last name. Those two, and Judd, a lot of Judd. Huh. And a lot of early Mel Bachner, which is really weird, but yes. Um, and what got, what got you off to that? And like Smithson too, because I was really into like, it's funny, it's like, you know, Mel Bachner, you did that growth chart of the tree, you know? And you look at Judd and the pencil lines and whatnot, kind of like building things from the ground up, you know? So I was like really scrappy and I was like, you know, I was like all raw canvas and I was purely interested in geometry. So my work initially at school was like super minimal, like fucking, you know, like hard edge painting. Um, Cause I wanted to learn what, how the materials worked first. And then I could like trick myself into learning all these other techniques that would actually get me to the point, you know? Um, but, Oh, we got a question already. Oh, uh, yeah. I just wanted to follow the protocol. Yeah. The, so, like, the, the previous painting that was before this, like, made me think of the, what is it, what's that guy that made Com 69, 3000? You know, remember, it's like the cat paintings that happened, it's like drum paintings, like, uh -huh. like, a little bit, like, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh, yeah. People, yeah, people, thought, people yeah, thought it was Matthew Maloof for a bit. I don't even care. Yeah. I don't do this thing. This is the whole thing with my work. The, I think that art is the arena where you can be like freaky and do your own shit. So like even like thinking about, you know, even like when I'm like, if we're doing a show with an artist here at the gallery, right? It's kind of important for us to, to not get close to the artist so we can remove ourselves and actually look at the work. And like also like politicizing something that's like not what I want to think about when I'm making work. I just want to think about like what it is. You know, because once those get involved, then it gets blurry and you don't know when to start and stop. Absolutely, I hear what you're saying. I'm just thinking about the irrelevance of cartoons. Well, that's the thing. It's so democratic. That's why I liked... That's why I was using cartoons and comics at first, because they speak for themselves. You know what I mean? Like, if something has a black outline around it, you already know what it's supposed to be. So it's like, kind of like, the low... It sounds lame, but it's like the lowest common denominator, but it works like a motherfucker. Definitely. Yeah. So this, I'm a twin, so this is kind of like sense of scale too. These are large girls stretching. It's kind of like a balthus, but it's almost like it means nothing. It means nothing? Yeah, just girls stretching. What? <laughs> but the scale of it really makes a difference, you know? And like um, what they're doing with their bodies, it's like, it's up to you. So these are supposed to be open-ended enough where you can like answer them. There's no right or wrong answer. To, There's, to I mean, viewer. it's like, That's it's an uncomfortable painting. That's the thing, there's a, there's a blurry line between all these things, like what is taste, what is comfortability, what is painting, what is art, what is right, what is wrong, and that's like what I'm interested in when I'm making work because that's like where I can do it. Yeah, you get, like, I feel like you fiend after that all the I have to, I, like, you know, comfortability breeds content. We just made the eyeball slightly larger and that was it. Yeah, it's, it's disconcerting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> This is a good one. Love the microwave. I'm a microwave fan. Can you guys tell? So that's an actual microwave that's embedded into the painting? Yeah, to see it in person. Yeah. And so it opens and closes. And then when it opens, it plays a song, right? Yeah. I can't remember what it plays. Me either. It's like my memory sucks. And then there's, like, there's lights inside the microwave, too. So oh, it's, like, yeah. it's like a little disco show inside. Yeah. It was like my um, trashy version of Rockwell, but with the microwave in the middle, it's called Chef Mike. <laughs> it's a great painting. Not as good as the Rockwell. I, yeah. But like, there's moments when, so you were saying like the girls yeah. stretching mm -hmm. kind of just like becomes nothing. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. No. But then there's moments where it's so like. It's about the objecthood and the quickness of this, you know? But this also feels, there's no way to not feel like there's an emotional place or like there's something coming up from the dregs where you're. I mean, who wants a poop painting? No one. You know what I mean? with the ladder in front of it, and that's, it just looked good. The painting needed it. So um, it's like the dumbest solution to an easy problem. And it just continues, like, 
You just see it as a series of formal problems yes. that need to get solved. Yes, problem solving. And then what happens after they're done? Like, do you That's actually it. never mind when they're done? Like, when you're putting them in a show, like when you when you were organizing this show. Yeah. Um, you know, so, this is talk about this first. Okay, so we basically, get into the my show. so a lot of my shows, um, I think, was like my second show. JTT was called um, um, Ten Pound Hand. And I had another show in the front of it that was a like a pseudo graffiti show called "If uh, Balls Could Talk," you know. And I don't know, but Melissa Brown actually gave us the idea for Ten Pound Hand. She's right there. And <laughs> Melissa, what does Ten Pound Hand mean? I mean, I think we all know what that is. No, but some people don't. It's something that you know. Well, not just women, but you know, someone might experience in a romantic moment a sort of strong suggestion of. Give me a blowjob. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Push the head down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's why it was funny because it was like the, the show in the front was um, a fake show of graffiti called um, If Balls Could Talk. And the carpet was Robbie because basically people had to walk over my father's company to get to my show. So most of my shows have some element of my family's promotional advertising social screen business. So um, this was kind of like a nice homage to that. And um, fuck, I'm, so, I'm like dyslexic and terrible names. John Roller Wilson, who's someone else I referenced in another painting. I looked at a book of his. He had these beautiful frames that were like this over these like terrible paintings. But the frames were amazing. And that's what I was thinking about with that, you know. But it's also kind of like, out of this world, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. The, so there's a couple things, like going back to how a show comes together. Yeah. Like if you're not thinking about like what's going on, like content wise, when yeah. you're making the painting, once you have a show, 10 pound hand, that's something that's like in your head. I had that's something, something to fuck with. I needed to fuck with something. Right. And then like when you start putting things in a room, does it start meaning something? Absolutely. It's all about architecture of the space, you know? Um, so, like, when I was in college, I was really interested in, like, you know, like, prison design and mall structures and all these things and how, you know, I actually initially went to school for ITI, like, information technology and informatics, which is how, like, shit, you know, information travels. So there's a book called Ambient Findability, which is how people process information. And any kind of structure, like, as in, like, a mall, or a hotel, or a park, or a prison, they all dictate your behavior. So that's what, you know, the paintings are meant to do. They're supposed to kind of bounce off of each other to create like a narrative, you know, because it is all like a cinematic thing. Um, but, my, you know, my work has changed so many times. And I've done, you know, a main part of my work too is like most of, like mainly, like probably 93% of it is from other appropriated references that I basically don't want to have a style at all. I'm trying to remove my hand completely, completely, you know? And I'm trying to emulate other people's style. So it's like, it's like I've said this several, like a million times, but instead of um, a solo voice, it's like a chorus. Yeah. And that makes it more democratic as well. And it's also, I'm training myself how to look at things differently. So I'm like, I'm processing shit in real time. I do not want to die. I'm like, you know, I'm speeding up with this shit and with everything else and it's fine. But like, if I die doing this, I probably won't even notice, and it'll be fine, you know. In think like in seeing Ashley, yeah, leave, yeah, and seeing what you're trying to build, is it like, is it legacy building? Are you trying to no, like fuck find? legacy? It's keeping it alive, you know. But what do you want to keep living? The art, the artist like spirit. Like I did the show at, um, in Montauk at the ranch, it's me and Mike Kelly and. The thing is, it's like, he's one of my favorite artists as well. And the thing I did not want to do was try to historicize myself with the dead artists because they can't fight back. And I thought that's like a really easy thing to do. So I wanted to get into the spirit of him and keep his shit alive. And basically, I, my paintings, my work was just sort of as backdrops for him to shine. You know, I wanted to activate his work, not mine. So that's how I, kind of how I think about these things, you know. So paintings are backdrops for real life. I want to see what there's... do you do with that? What do you do with that? That's really interesting, actually. Like, the thing about, just in your role as a gallerist, I think, oh, I saw Henny Alpha. Mm -hmm. you know, and then I thought, 
oh wait, and then I saw Alex Cass, and I'm like, oh shit, oh bitch, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, but do I wanna be like, yeah, pro Swedish feminist? It has nothing to do with like, any of that stuff. It doesn't, no, she's actually better than that. I, that's reductive. But like, what do I do when I'm like learning about Alice Cobb's in the context of Honey and that I want to like sort of, you know, give the props where they're due, but at the same time, the shit needs to keep moving. Well, I think the thing is like, what I noticed, like myself, like what I've really noticed in the past couple of years is backing up and not going in too far. Because if you back up, you can see the big picture, mm-hmm. and that's what we should be paying attention to. Because the thing I didn't like about painting and art in general is that it's so insular and such a circle jerk, masturbatory thing, and it's not democratic, so it's not accessible. So like, no one wants to like look in your fucking underwear drawer and it's less they're fucking you. You know what I mean? Okay. Sorry, that sounded like flippant, no, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 totally. Oh, here we go. There's so, installation shots. I was yeah. trying to find like how. So these are two CDs that that spin. So I made this um, windmill that goes on top of this structure that had um, this symbol on it that would spin. This was, symbol on it? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what it is, come on. And these are uh, Billy Joel, volume one and two. <laughs> and at night, it looked like an owl looking at you, which is really good. Oh, that's so good. This is, I would, like, as, as far as sculpture goes, this is probably one of the sculptures I'm jealous that you made. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. So this was a painting that I tried to sneak into the Venice Biennale when I was in it in 2022, because I thought I needed it, just that little cat thing. And I was like, please God, let me, it's like this big, it's like from some fucking, it's like like bad version of Starbucks or something, you know? And I thought that it would kind of disrupt my line of paintings. It wouldn't let me do it, because I tried to sneak it in. So I just decided <laughs> to make 27 of them instead. And this is um, a reference to uh, Mike Kelly thing, yeah. And I just did it. It's about repetition, you know. I'm also a twin, and I also grew up in a silk screen factory. So I'm seeing images being thrown out and being reappropriated over and over and over again, kind of like, you know what I mean? Big Willie style. Yeah, so, yeah. That show was awesome. This was the first time I could actually look at a space architecturally. I was like, doing, it wasn't like a white gallery space that was so simple and basic. I'd like fight against something, and I had a structure to work with. Here we go. Yeah, that had history to it. And these are both Mike Kelly works here. That's Mike Kelly, that's Mike Kelly. That's... Hi, Tim. How's Tim doing? He's good. Should I bring some wine out? I was fucking, everyone have cups? I was fucking 30 bucks in. Okay. All right, fuck it. Yeah. Hold on. Give me some wine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> There's a million things to talk about, but I think of Flaherty's has become something that's really important to you and something that I've seen yeah. like transform you as a person. And yeah. Like working with all these artists has yeah. just been such a big deal. I just want to go through some of these shows and give them some props too. Because yeah. like that's what you've been doing too. Yeah. This is Anthea Hamilton. She's a great artist. This show came together in like a week. Not really. That's what we <laughs> told everyone, but it's fine, yeah. But it's, you know, the cool thing is like artists, it's like talking to artists, like, you know, artists get it. So if you're like, listen, this is what we're fr- trying to fucking do, and you relate to them, you know, and like everyone likes doing their own thing and not being in some other, you know what I mean? Like they get it. And like the thing is, like, I've been working for a long time, and I, I have a lot of friends that do all different kinds of work, and I've done a lot of shows. So like they know my intentionality and they know like my my dedication, whether you like my work or not, it's not really about that at all. So like, you know, people usually fuck with us for the most part. This is something that we've talked about a lot. This mm-hmm. is also something that's like, you know, we've disagreed in the past about certain things. We yeah. disagreed about Don't, shows, we disagreed about shit. tons of shit. Yeah. And like I think there's like this feeling today that we're all like that there's supposed to be constant consensus. Or that everybody's supposed to like feel no. the same way about things, but like we've had arguments so that just fights. never like don't resolve. We're just like fucking that's not gonna resolve. Mm-hmm. But I still like you, and I still like your work, same. and like it's not. It's a conversation, dude. It yeah. continues over and over, and it's like it's just one of these funny things that I see where people. It's not to say that there aren't problems or that there aren't things to talk about. 
but when you do talk about them, it doesn't mean that it like that person's out of your life or that person. Like we all have family, we all have people that we don't really like all of the parts of them. Yeah. But it that doesn't mean that it's like over. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that that's growth if like if you find find a way to just like remove all of that from your life. Yeah. Sometimes you have to remove it. Sometimes mm. it's like it's important to do that. Mm. But other times like. I don't know. I had, to, I had to, like, I, we didn't talk, talk for, for a, a while. while. Like a year and change. Yeah, it was fucked, yeah. <laughs> and we then, got some really fucked up fucking talks and shit, yeah. But then we started talking again. Yeah. And, like, I think that shit's important. It also, there's so many reasons why I keep, I come back to your work, and there's mm. so many reasons why I'm, like, fucking proud of you as an artist Same and as dude. a person. But, yeah. like, it's, when I look at your work today and when I see the things that are, sometimes troubling or sometimes interesting, mm -hmm. it's like, that's also where I want to be. Totally. Like, what's the fucking point otherwise? Exactly. It's like presenting something. Yeah. That's it. We're just trying to present an idea. But when you think about... Ask me whatever. You need some When wine. you think yeah, about... Here we go. I knew this shit was When you think about it. politics... Yeah. Do you... Um, is there good political art to you? Yes, actually. Um, something that I think about a lot um, I'm gonna fucking say their names wrong. Uh, Komar Melamed, I think that's their name. Yeah. They did the yeah. elephant art thing. Elephant art? Yeah. yeah ele painting. It's crazy. Don't look it up. Just you look it up later. It's very, very good. Um, Don't say that. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But um, it's pretty incredible, <laughs> and it like shook me because I don't know. I think that the, you know. They're political in a way where it's not even like translated through people, it's translated through animals. So it's not um, articulated through words, you know, and it's different to me. But uh, no, it was a, they, the it's on YouTube. What? Yeah, but it's fucked up. It's very crazy. And I feel like this was very political and I thought that this was like really important. Um, there, there is some political art, but I think that the arena that politics and art have taken recently, it's like, because the way that we process all this information has changed so much, it's so influenced by all this other shit that it's not coming from a unique place because it is like a wave of things, you know? And I feel like that these are like isolated moments of time that are translated differently. And these are translated through animals, not people. So I feel like, for me, this is kind of like the root of the shit, you know? But this is something that I think about a lot. But this a, particular piece? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> We've never talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking crazy, but there's a YouTube video of it. It's awesome. But it's just, it's the elephant painting? Elephant's painting. Can you talk about the politics of that? It's animal rights, dude. <laughs> I feel like that's like... No, I'm sorry. That sounds like really reductive, and I'm not trying to like dismiss like political stuff at all, because I think that all these things are very important. But to me, when I'm making work, I don't want it to be an element of my work, because I think that it clouds the vision of the image mm -hmm. you know because i'm thinking about the image i'm not thinking about that you yeah know? yeah what and it's also not my arena like i don't even vote you know i'm not a political person like i have my ethics but that's different yeah yeah you know and also like i'm like a white bitch from like the east coast like what the fuck am i getting bitch about you know so like how can i even have an opinion on that thing without even being informed so that's why i don't but this is why we always because yeah. you could just inform yourself yeah yeah <laughs> i know i can i know but that's the thing it's like I'm trying to focus on the image. Yeah, and I get that. Yeah. And I, like, I think in talking about that, like, it's been fascinating to see what the image means to you mm -hmm. through the shows. And that's like, a, it's a separate conversation. It's yeah. like, it's completely independent of, in ways, it's completely independent of politics. Yeah. It's not to say that it doesn't have a politic to totally. it, but they're still separate. Yeah. And that's hard to figure out sometimes. Well, that's why it's also, that's, you know, like my first couple shows, I was using this shit from Ralph Bakshi, yeah. you know? And the reason why I did it was because no one was doing that. Because I wanted to present an idea to see what would happen and how did it feel. Because I was processing that information mm -hmm. in real time. And that doesn't mean like that's something I believe in or not, or I'm not saying anything, I just wanted to process it. But you wouldn't it. use it now? No. Because it's not, like it doesn't do I already did thing. it. What yeah. the fuck am I going to learn now? <laughs> you know? What did you learn then? People get pissed off, <laughs> you know? And it's also get mistranslated because people have opinions, you know? Yeah. And I also think maybe I would do it again. I don't know. You know, what I'm about, still learning. Like, 
Uh, I don't have answers, you know? You know what I mean? JTT, that yes. was your gallery for a while. Jasmine, so I showed with Jasmine for years and she like started with like nothing. She did it herself too. And I made a painting that we both had different conceptual opinions on. And like, and that's cool and I respect it because she supported my ass the whole fucking time. But me as an artist, me working with her for so long, I was like, you can't tell me what I cannot make, what I can do. You don't have to like it, you don't have to sell it, you don't have to show it. But I just don't like being told what I'm allowed to make because that's not cool, you know? Like, it's art, this shit's not even real. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, you know, it's like presenting an idea doesn't mean shit, you know? So I was like, this is like not, we just, people have different opinions and that's cool and that happens, you know? And that's fine, I think she's a great person, she's a great gallerist and she has a vision. And I respect that, and so do I. And sometimes these things go like this, and that's it, you know? I've gotten in fights with a million fucking people over the past couple of years, so whatever, you know? Shit happens. Yes? Um, is there a time in the uh, recent or distant past that stands out to you where you change your mind about something? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> look back at shows and yeah I cringe all the time dude <laughs> yeah oh can you talk about Overtachi so Overtachi I found this book in like a garbage can believe it or not in Rome for like oh it was like three bucks in like some junk pile and um it's an incredible artist that I keep referencing in my work over and over again so like you know I did a painting called Bacon Boy which is a show I did JDT there's my dog right there Tim um yeah. I mean, there's a million things I keep coming back to, like, you know, in this show in particular, if you keep going, you'll see this red painting that is, um, you know, we just did, before this show, we did a show with this uh, artist named Christian Ludwig Adderse, and I've been, you know, referencing him for 10 years. So it's kind of like all the accumulation of things I've been looking at in the paintings are, we're doing it here, you know? I'll show Christian's show. And then I think we should open it up yeah, the, to you all. Questions and shit. Yeah. But this show, yeah. This is from 1969. That's crazy, you know? So talk about, like, time styling. This guy knows how to do everything. And he just does it like he, it's, like, fucking or breathing for him. It's, like, incredible. And, like, you know, this painting is, like, that one on the left. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. Sorry. See it on the left, that big thing? It was so, we were like, what the fuck are we going to do with this, you know? Because the first thing we noticed was the frames were, like, this is, like, not our thing and then it transformed over time I was like this may be the best painting in the show because it is so fucked up you know so like this thing like living with these things it's like dating someone you get to like you know and then you just keep moving but it's like personalities you know what I mean it's different living with something than just visiting it like I hate that painting and that's fucking cool you know but and that's what this looked like last month or whatever so, so what's, what's next for you? No fucking clue. What's next for O'Flaherty's? No fucking clue. We actually don't really know. That's cool. And that's why we actually create these things called emergency shows. Because like, you know, like I said, if we premeditate something too long, we lose the enthusiasm for it and it sucks. We also like the element of fear and risk equals reward. <laughs> oh, actually, the one thing we should, like in talking about democratizing art and talking yep. about democratizing the image, yep. the Patriot was... Probably, like, maybe some of you know this gallery because of the Patriot. Probably, but it's okay. That, that, well, that's, <laughs> that show made itself, you know? I I, I, yeah. I love the Patriot because me and my boss showed. Yeah, everyone was in it. Because, you know, Billy was, Billy said this. He's like, if everything touches, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The Patriot was a show where it was an open call. Uh, how many artists? 1,128 people were in the show. And um, we hung everything if it was under a certain scale, and even if it was like fucked up and ugly as shit, and it all looked good together because you couldn't tell anymore. I'm gonna just, this is a short press release. The most disappointing show for an artist is to be in a summer group show. You're slobbed together with a bunch of strangers who are totally unrelated to what you're about. The rich people are out of town, plus, the gallery probably wouldn't ever show you. Guess what? You thought you couldn't be in a more disrespectful group show, and you were wrong. Yeah. We literally took any piece of shit you brought in, whether it was awesome or a total trash, and tried to make it an idea. The Patriot is a truly democratic show where everyone is treated equally like shit. <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. And that was a show. Yeah. Uh, there were other elements to it that um, are kind of hidden that maybe the public doesn't know about that Billy and I really focused on. 
And that's cool because it's our little secret, you know? This was, they shut down like the East Village. <laughs> In 30 minutes. It was like six blocks, no, six precincts and shit. It was fucking crazy. Never again. We're never doing it again, so don't ask, you know? <laughs> but I anyway. came with that show high on acid. Yeah, no, uh, we had to get fucked up every day because it was like Six Flags, like being a career at like a Walmart. It was like, like me and my grandma were both in this show, and we're like, who the fuck are you? And like, you have to remember where everything is, like, um, you know, because uh, like, you know, Rory, who was worked for us for a while, he's great at photographic memory, so he like held down the fort while we get fucked up in the bathroom and it's perfect. But um, the best thing was, you know, because everyone has this anxious energy after like COVID and shit, and everyone was like so ready to like fucking go ham. So we thought it'd be great. Everyone was like so excited to see their art in the gallery. So we turned off all the lights. And everyone was like, oh, like looking for their shit. And it was like, but then people kept coming back and like you'd always learn something. You'd see something new every time you went, you know? So it was really cool. And uh, there, yeah, it was awesome, you know? Well, I just want to thank you again for doing this. No problem. This. I want to thank but, everybody for coming. Yeah. But we're going to keep it open. I just want to say one thing. So, um, I'm new crits and me and myself, we're, we're dedicating this talk to an artist who recently passed. Uh, her name is Julia Jalowick. Um, she was an amazing artist and an amazing person. And these are, these are some of her pieces. Um, Julia meant a lot to me. Um, she was an old student of mine. Um, she was somebody from the Midwest who like, Applied to Columbia six or seven times and never got in. And I happened to be on the admissions committee the seventh time. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, this shit is fucking weird. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, I pushed for it. And then she did super well there. And she was, uh, you know, she had so much trouble growing up. She didn't have many friends. Her art was her friends. Like, she made things to have friends. And little by little, like, one of the things that I told her was, like, you got to make space for other people. Like, you can't, you can't keep, like, over-identifying with everything. And that's exactly what she fucking did. She started making space for everybody. And likewise, like, everybody made space for her. And she was with me this summer at Skowhegan, where I was teaching and um, she was just a really, really beautiful person and um, she deserved all the love and she's one of those people that like showered everybody with love and uh, a friend of mine recently said there's just no time to be unkind and I think that's really true. Um, the reason we do these things, the reason we make shit, the reason we're together, the reason why we hang out, the reason why we have fun, the reason why any of this shit fucking matters mm. is because like, we believe in these things. There's a devotional aspect to this. Like, regardless of how flippant Jamian's work is or mm. anybody's work is, regardless how sometimes things can look fucked up or even mean, mm. if you're making work, if you're really devoted to what you do, there is a genuine devotion there, and I believe that. And Julia believed it more than anybody else. And so, tonight's for her. <laughs> Jamie's made me feel so many things too. Um, same dude. And I love Family, her. motherfucker. Yeah, I love you she's too. family. Yeah. So, thank you so much for coming. It really means a lot. I hope you keep coming. Um, I hope you keep showing up for all the art events. I hope you keep coming to O'Flaherty's. And you quit, motherfuckers. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, all the things. I told you about the socials. If you want to know anything else about it, let me know. Um, can they chill for a bit here? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. But, if, you know, if you ever want to move around and shit, that's fine. If you want to ask questions, just... So, yeah, if anybody has questions, now's the time. Yeah, but you guys can also move and shit. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Questions, anyone? Yeah. Yes. What That's financial literacy? Amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing question. What financial literacy? The thing, it's fun. It's like um, they feed each other, you know? 
the reason why I paint is to make this happen, and the, you know, that's really it, you know. And then, like in the studio painting, it really depends. Like it could be like fucking two hours, I'm like fuck it, I can come up with like three ideas and that's it. Or I'll spend like, I don't know, like 90 hours on some shit and I'll throw it out. It really, it's always up in the air, you know. It just depends on my mood. But there is no financial literacy, so if anyone wants to buy this show and place it in a museum, go for it, yes. Yeah. If anybody is financially literate, please get in touch with you. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I really love the way that you keep explaining how to do, so like if we're experiential knowledge or something, it's kind of like it's like a unique like oral language or whatever. Yeah. Wait, say it was the last two words. I'm sorry, I'm like deaf. Like, your relationship to like spirituality. It's very important, and it's like a very personal. I remember once you said that you wanted to be the head editor of the Onion, and I wondered if you considered <laughs> doing that for real. Dude, I'm trying not to read anymore, so you know. I mean, I love writing, but I'm just trying to keep it simple, you know. <laughs> I think AI is the devil, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I think I'm trying to make the um, the opposite. I'm trying to do AI in real life mentally, you know? And that's cool. People can do their shit, but it's not my thing. I like analog exactly. stuff. So why I am asking, so I am feeling that you are not in this age about it. The computer fucking sucks. I'm getting older, maybe that's why, and they, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you are, yeah. Yeah. Older, <laughs> and that's fine, that's fucking it. fine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta keep it that way, you know. So if I can bring that old school, question, yeah. Are you a good Hopefully, I mean, you guys are here. It's half of it, but no. I mean, I I think that thinking about art and business is one thing, and business can also be an art, you know. And that's why, like, you know, my parents, I said, are like some of the most creative people I know, but they do it through their business. So I think anyone could actually be creative and artistic through their own shit, you know. It doesn't have to be through art. So I think it's a flexible answer. So financially, they are supporting. I hope my parents, I wish. Yeah, right. Fuck that. They're like looking at me, I'm like fucking back up, you know? <laughs> so. I think part so of that. I'm not considering uh, here the sales you tell. So, how you are affording this? Uh, Through my paintings. With your paintings? Yeah. You we, have are... a, we have a friend that helps us once in a while if we beg, but it's awkward. <laughs> and then through my paintings. So, you know, we don't really, we don't really make a lot of money. That's not really one. Did you sell your old works in the Gagosian I'm not asking yet. I'm fucking working here every day. I don't want to know. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. I'm sure they did, but I don't know. Probably they I fucking okay. hope so. Jesus fucking Christ, you know. I guess so. In this time, you will be uh, good things. I am thinking. Awesome. The, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. <laughs> yeah. The way that I feel like the way that I've seen you like kind of take care of deals or take care of the way that things move in this space you don't second guess the same way. And I think that's really important in terms of building a business and like understanding how you can move forward. We don't even know how to do business. That's why it's cool, you know? Like, fuck it, like, we're gonna make our own model. Business is business in everywhere. I know. In all eras. Yeah. We have to make it work, totally. Yeah, that's it. Yes, in the back. Thank you so much. No problem. You know, I always think about it as like a scene wave of like history or something like that, you know? So like, we kind of have a premeditated plan and then we need something that transforms the last idea into something, you know what I mean? It just keeps building. So for, for the most part, we don't really show paintings because Billy and I make them and we're sick of it, you know? Um, that's, why we do, that's, that's why we have this space so we can do things that we don't do that's new to us. Uh, you know, it's, it really depends, like, cause, and we have our own ideas and shit like that, too. And really, it's all over the place, you know. But we don't really look for anything. We just kind of, like, just hit, and then that's it. <laughs> anything else? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you were to direct a movie, what movie would you direct? Good question. That's a fucking great question. <laughs> I have no idea. Can I, can I ask a question from that? Like, because when I look at your paintings, they feel frozen. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's something deeply cinematic about it, but it also feels like you're more interested in the arrested moment rather than the moving 
It's like a strobe light that goes down, down, you know, something like that. I can't so the, explain it. Is the movie just like O'Flaherty's and your painting? And no. Like that's the, no, the that's spot. a loop. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the last question I'm asking: um, Do you think uh, you find your style uh, or stylistic? I don't have a style. Will you change uh, the next exhibition, next show? I have no idea. You have no idea. Right? And that's cool. I mean, because it's going on. Yeah, it's going. I'm, learn, I'm doing it in real time. I have no idea. Thank you. Maybe, Maybe one more? One more? Yeah. Oh, that's with the Paul Wall painting. Yeah, I love Paul Wall. Yeah. So basically, Paul Wall, you know, I love Paul Wall. He's like a white rapper from fucking Texas. And it's like he's supposed to be disrespectful in court. So that's why he's flicking uh, paper football, because he's known as the people's champ. And we just listened to it for the whole show. And was then, that in this? Uh, it was Mrs. Evan Williams. Oh, it was Mrs. Evan Williams. And then the other one, it's like, you know, it's funny. The paint's fucked up. Yeah. But anyway, it's kind of like, you know, I hate Patty Smith. Sorry. And, um, <laughs> and it's like some little art fag sitting on a bed. Like, mm. He's like wearing a beret. And there's like a Patty Smith poster in the background. And there's a brick being thrown through the wall that says cracker on it. And it's like, you know, like, it's like everyone needs to, it's a little insular bullshit. Yeah. So that's what those things are referenced to, self-awareness. Anything else? One more? Last one? Yes. Last question. Is there any art critiques like, out there right now that you actually respect? Like, uh, I don't read any of this stuff. <laughs> I, do, I do like how short and sweet the Manhattan Art Review stuff is, even though he hates us. It's fine. But I think I like the format of it because it is like really simple. I can't stand it. I, I, Billy fucking wants to kill him, you know? <laughs> but I think I like it because it pisses me off so much. I think it's easy. It is easy. Maybe it is, but maybe I'm just lazy. I don't know. You know? <laughs> But anyway, thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was good. You did a great job. I love you.